Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about more of the general view, uh, area of the screen. So not just the 3D viewport, but also these different panels on the side and what they do. So this is going to be, this might be a bit of a shorter one. It's it's not going to be as boring as the first one, but it's going to be a little, it's going to be pretty boring. Um, so just stick with it and then we're going to get on to modeling soon afterwards. So, okay, so in Blender, this is kind of your standard layout. Um, everything you see on screen is most of what you're going to need when it comes to modeling and stuff. Um, they have different layouts out here. So a new part of Blender 2.8 is you can uh, better divide your uh, like layouts. So for example, right now we're in the default layout mode. Um, but if you see, if we click here to modeling, it'll change how the viewport looks a bit. So it got rid of that timeline on the bottom. Um, it pushes it pushes us into that edit mode I was talking about. You press tab to switch between object and edit mode. Um, but it looks mostly the same, uh, but it gets a bit more complicated. So if you switch to sculpting, you'll go into sculpt view. So it gives this realistic-ish texture called a matte cap to the to the object. And it also gives you all these different sculpting options on the side. Basically, there's all these different windows um, that you can use for making your scene look better for the task you want to do. So say you want to work on shading your object. Um, it throws it into this realistic uh, texture look with a uh, 360 degree picture for realistic lighting and then you can tweak your setting right here for your shading. Um, we're not going to worry about that too much right now but just know that you can customize your layout. You can even add new layouts by hitting the plus button and then you can pick like a starting whatever. So anyways we don't have to worry about that too much. I'm most, I personally don't use these layouts too much. I'll probably be using them more in the future but anyways um, you can also, so in customizing these layouts, uh, you can create new windows and you can resize windows. So for example, if you go on the edge, so see this viewport is on the edge of these two windows right here. Um, these are split right here on the center, just so you know. Um, if you hover over it, you see it switches to these like two arrows and you can click and drag. Um, same thing for right here, if you want to be able to see more of the objects in the scene. Um, if you want to see the properties and stuff, it's on the bottom. And I'll be talking about those in a second. Um, just to kind of give you a view of how you can manipulate these windows. Um, and if you want to make another window, you can right-click on the border where you want to make a new window. So I'm going to right-click right here. And you can split or join. So we're going to hit split. And then you notice when I come over here, um, it, brought, it brings up this little line. And when I click, it'll actually split the window. And then we can come over here. And this little button right here lets you change the, what the window shows. So for example, up here you see this is by default set to the 3D viewport for this window. So for example, I could change it to shader editor and it'll go to that shade, shader editor that we saw right here. I'm um, going back to the layout. So, and then if say you wanted to get rid of one of these windows and clear up your viewport a bit, uh, again, right click on the border. And in this case, if you want to specifically merge this one into this window, you want to make sure you click on the, their border between them and then we're going to hit join and you notice a little arrow pops up so for example I'm going to click here and it'll merge the, that bottom window into the top one so again just kind of showing you you can just, uh, split area and this time it's vertical because I use the top portion so then I can split it and then if I want to join it hover over it join yeah, it's pretty nifty um, Anyways, we're going to be talking more about what these windows actually are. So this window right here, if we come over here, I want to get the exact name for it, um, is called the Outlier window. Um, you can see it by its little icon. All these windows have nice little icons. Um, and if you ever want to change these windows, the context is always in the top left corner. So see the timeline down here? We can change even this timeline to be a 3D viewport. See? And there's a little box down there. So I'm going to leave that to the uh, timeline. But Sorry, getting a little off track. But anyways, this is the outlier window. So this is all the objects in your scene. So for example, if I select the cube here, you'll notice that cube right here is highlighted. If I select, select the camera, camera's highlighted. Um, and this is also where you can change the name of your object. So if I double click cube, or you might be able to right click it as well. Maybe not. No. Anyways, if you double click it, we can also change it. So instead of cube, now I called it box. So you notice when I click off of it, it's unselected. If I click on it, let me get rid of that for you. So it's a little, it's not highlighted in the orange part, but when I click on the box, see how it's highlighted? 
So that's where you can see all the objects in your scene. It's also where you can make collections. Collections are a new thing in Blender 2.8. So if I hit add a new collection right here, it's basically like a folder on your desktop. So for example, I'm going to drag it up here to scene collect. Oh, it's already there. So you notice if I minimize that, there's two different collections. And the cool thing about collections is it's better for sorting objects by layers. Um, it's what replaced layers in Blender 2.7. So for example, with collection 2 selected, if I hit shift A in the scene and hit add a cube, you'll notice that I have two cubes and you'll notice there's one in collection 2 and collection 1. And the reason you might want to do this is say you have a foreground and a background. You could put all of the foreground objects in one collection and all the background objects in another. Um, and then you can rename them. So we can call this foreground. And then the, what's really cool is you can do like a mass edit to all these objects. So for example, um, I can hit select objects. It'll select all the objects in that collection. So I'll show you with this one that has a couple more. So if I hit um, select objects, it selects all the objects, um, but since I already had, I'm going to hit Alt A, so with nothing selected, I'm going to do that one more time. So see now they're all selected except for that cube. Um, and you can also hide all the objects, so if I click this little eye icon right here, um, you'll notice that all the objects in that collection disappear. Um, but do note that even though they've gone from the viewport, when you render it, they'll still be there because this little camera icon is actually for render. So see how it says disable object in, in renders? So if I turn that off, it won't show up when we render it. But I'm going to turn it back on. You can also make it so you can't select objects. So say you had something in the background you didn't want to accidentally click on. Well, now I can't click on it. Um, and this last one is disable objects in viewport. I'm pretty sure it does the same thing. Uh, I think disable is more of a uh, like uh, um, basically it doesn't if it has modifiers and stuff. I'm not too sure what the difference is, but basically it's another way to hide your object. Um, so that's it for the outlier panel. This right here is a very important panel. This is like your properties panel for pretty much everything. Um, see right here properties under data, and this panel is very important. You're usually going to want it on screen when you're tweaking objects because it has everything. Um, I'm just going to start from the top and I'll go down. So right off the bat right here, um, you have your active tool. So this is if you want to you change your tool around. So you'll notice when I switch the select to the, to the transform and stuff, um, there isn't too much information right here. But basically, if you're in, like, for example, if we go over to sculpting mode, you'll notice that there's more options in the tool panel because the sculpting options have a lot more things you can change. Um, so there's sculpting. And then you'll notice there's a divide. So if you see that slight divide right here, there's one, two, three, four, five buttons right here. And these all relate to either rendering or the world. So like, for example, this one with the camera is where you want to change how you render an actual scene. So you can change the engine you use, EV or Cycles. Uh, cycles is a realistic ray tracing engine for realistic lighting. EV is more like a game engine. So both EV and Cycles look great, but Cycles is more realistic, but it also takes a lot more time to render things. Um, you can also change all sorts of other things like ambient occlusion, bloom, depth of field, all those things, motion blur. So everything related to rendering. Um, the next one is output, so how the actual image is outputted or how the animation's outputted. Um, you also can do post-processing things. Um, next is the view layer. Um, I haven't messed with this light, this one too much. I think this used to be more for like if you wanted to render the foreground and background separately. If you had a really complex scene, it would, it would uh, allow you to render objects without your program crashing due to like memory limitations. But uh, we're not going to be using this one too much. But just do note that it's there. You can always hover over these icons to get their names. Um, the next one is the scene. So for example, you can change things about your scene, such as which camera is the default camera. Um, background etc. You can also change units so if you want to use uh, metric or imperial for like interior scenes that goes back to that measuring tool over here. Um, you can also turn on and off gravity or tweak the, its uh, strength. That's more so for uh, physics simulations but you don't have to worry about that if you're modeling. Um, and also with audio, rigid body stuff, most of that you don't really have to tweak with. Um, the last one is world. This one's pretty important. Um, you can change the background of the world. So say you wanted to add a 360 degree picture to light your scene, you'd do it right here. Or you could just change the color. So say you wanted to make the background a different color. 
Um, this, I th believe, only does any uh, changes if it's actually rendering, so it won't actually change this gray background right here. Um, same thing, viewport display. Oh, here's viewport display, so if you want to change that. No? Hmm. That might be something else. I thought I figured it'd be this, but anyways, you get the idea. And then these last few all relate to your object. So for example, I'm going to select this box. Um, so right off the bat, you have all your object settings. So like it's location. So you notice if I move this, it'll change the object's location, um, X, Y, and Z. Also the scale, rotation, etc. Um, you also have relations. So like which objects are parented to it. Um, we don't have to worry about that right now. Collections, what collections it's in, etc. So just these are all for tweaking your object basically. And then the next one is object constraints. This is if I believe this is more so helpful in terms of like rigging characters for animation. Um, but you know you can add like certain constraints, like you know if you want to make it to a certain gear spin at the same time or whatever. Um, Next is modifiers. This one's pretty important. This is one of Blender's biggest um, advantages is non-destructive workflows. So you can add certain things to your model to, to change it. So for example, see this box right here. I'm going to add a modifier called subdivision surface. And you'll notice it makes it look a little weird. It looks more like a sphere, but we can up it a bit. And you'll notice it starts to get really smooth. So we're going to be messing around with that a lot later. But the cool thing is it does it isn't permanent to the geometry. So if I take it off, it'll set it back to normal. So very cool. Um, next, we have object data. So this is where we tweak certain settings like UV maps and stuff. Um, you can you have multiple UV maps, uh, face maps, normals, etc. Um, object data. I don't. There's one. I think there was one thing that I do change quite a bit. Yeah, normals, auto smooth is very helpful, but we're not going to talk about that right now. Um, material. This one's pretty important. This is how your material appears to the world. To the uh, world. So, for example, um, you know, if you want to change its color, if you make, if you want to make it super reflective, um, let's see now. Maybe if I move this cube a bit, uh, I'll move it right here. Oh, it might be because we're an EV. Anyways, you get the gist. You can uh, tweak the material and stuff how it looks. Um, and then we also have textures, if you want to make some custom textures like clouds and whatnot. Um, this I believe also is where you tr set things up for texture painting. Uh, we don't have to worry about that. There's a lot of things we don't have to worry about. Um, this one's particles, so this is for if you want um, to make things like fall like sparks off an object or if you want to do hair effects like this. Um, it's all going to be under here in particles. Um, you can also do like weather effects, you know, make it look like snow's falling. Uh, and last but not least, physics. So this is pretty cool. You can do all sorts of physics. You can do rigid body physics, like a tower, blocks falling over. You can do cloth physics, so it looks like an actual shirt. Um, dynamic paint, you can make, that's a bit more complicated. You can paint a surface with particles. Um, fluid, you can make water simulations. They look pretty cool. Um, there's an add-on for Blender that costs 60 bucks called Flip Fluids if you really want to get serious about that, but it is very costly on a render time. Um, and there's smoke physics and stuff. So yeah, it's all very cool. Um, that's pretty much it for the properties panel. Um, down here we also have a timeline, uh, but you don't really have to worry about the timeline too much because it, it's usually only really used for... Uh, animations and stuff or you know those physics simulations I was talking about and we're not going to be really doing that in this video we're going to be focusing on modeling so anyways that's pretty much all I want to talk with you about today there's plenty of other windows as you can tell over here but more of the complicated ones like UV texturing and such we're going to kind of be learning on the way um, because they can be complicated um, explaining without actually showing how they work so Thanks for watching this video. This one was about as long as the last one, but I just kind of wanted to go further in depth about where everything was. So when I was clicking around, you kind of were familiar with what I was doing, but I'll try to continue talking in these videos. So thanks again for watching. Please stick with Blender. It's a great program. So have a good day.